Hey everyone, we know you're hungry for success this archery season. So while you're prepping for the hunt, we're inviting you to join us live every Wednesday as we share our best recipes to show you how to prepare your game from wild to table. It's all part of the Bowtech Live content series to help you become a smarter hunter. Surefire Wednesdays are broadcast at camp, in the kitchen, and from the backyard. Simply text WATCH to 313131 and we'll send a link instantly to your phone when we go live. Bring your questions, get ready to win some great gear, and we'll see you live on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Good evening and welcome to Surefire Wednesdays. It's going to be an exciting night because we checked our freezer and the oh, freezer's almost yeah, empty. All we had left was gross. That's Actually, great. we still had a little bit of bear left, but that went quick too. You know that it's hunting season when you check that, uh, check that, that frozen crate and you start to see the bottom of it. So this is going to be a little bit of fun. Grouse is one of those things that when you get skunked like we did, there was yeah. no black bear last fall, it kind of takes the pain away. A little bit of yeah. trout fishing, a little bit of grouse hunting, oh, yeah. um, but and we want to make an elegant dish here. They're an awesome animal to hunt too. Their camouflage is amazing, but Beautiful. probably some of the best I've ever seen in terms of natural camouflage, which makes these a pleasure to hunt. And you know, one of the things that's always said about grouse, so they'll stand and look at you and kind of give like a, you know, and okay, I'm going to shoot it. But at, by the same token, when we went deeper uh, into the uh, far north, I literally, I remember this big, it was a big heifer, oh, yeah, big boy, yeah. beautiful one. And I'm looking for him and I'm looking around and I swear I saw him and I literally, I look up. And he's above right it. above me. Yeah. So, uh, listen, what we're going to do, we've got some great techniques. Like all Surefire Wednesdays, we're focused on techniques. One of the things I'm going to teach you tonight is how to make a perfect wild mushroom risotto. So, it won't be long, and it'll be time, you know, if you're still foraging in different parts of the nation where you can find mushrooms, uh, we're going to do a risotto. And then what I did, we had the presence of mind to leave some of the bird together. So, we've got one... We've, we've plucked the bird completely clean, left the feet on, we've got some of the wings on, and then we've got some, we're just talking about grouse here. Oh, okay, well that barbecue's fired up with that hardwood charcoal, it's ready to go. Nice, so that gives our segue to, we're going to smoke the grouse. Now, we're going to take it off the bone, it's going to be a quick application, quick cooking, but listen, just before we get to that, uh, you'll see we've got uh, the old uh, glory there, the stars and stripes. We want to just take a minute uh, to uh, take a moment of silence uh, just to honor those who, uh, who we've lost in Texas and to those uh, first responders who are working so hard to save people. So I just want to take a moment of silence here, boys. Now, with that in mind, um, my daughter, uh, and I've got, uh, I've got these... Uh, a stethoscope here for reason. My daughter uh, is enter Blair is entering into uh, uh, EMS school this fall, so she's training to be a paramedic. So this is something that's very yep. near and dear to my heart. Now, one of the things I think that warmed my heart beyond belief yep. 
is seeing all of our brothers and sisters headed out there with their John boats. I saw yeah. sea dudes. Oh, every so time. listen, this is uh, this kind of response from the outdoors community. It literally it makes the hair stand up. Fun. It does. <laughs> it does. It does. Legit. Fun. I do. <laughs> listen. Thank you to everybody who's doing it. If I was uh, less than uh, two thousand miles away, we would yep. be there ourselves. Be there well. So thank you for that. Now. The other thing we've got going on, you might say, what? We've got wine. <laughs> so this is uh, Surefire Wednesday's Appreciation yep. 101. Yep. And so we're going to be talking about wine a yeah, little bit Yeah, we too. typically do a nice mixed drink or something like that. But tonight we're going to go back to the basics. We're going to touch on some red wines and some white wines. And the reason that we're pairing them, them with this dish, you know, we got some nice Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, Pinot Grigio. And we're going to explain to you different types of glasses. We got some red wine Bordeaux glasses, stemless, stem on. So we're going to really touch on all the basics of wine appreciation. Absolutely. Yeah. And then I, I have an awesome recipe for you guys today for when you're getting up early during hunting season, you're tired. I got a chocolate caramel protein ice latte. So that, mm, wow. That for those good. early mornings <laughs> where, you know, you just had hunts. This also from Mountain Ops is full of BCA. So if you just did a workout or tired from a long hike, it gets that recovery, but also gets you that early morning boost. Now you're gonna love this. So uh, by the way, please uh, like, share, comment, yep. and we'd love to hear from you tonight about anything we're talking about. Yep. Something that uh, espresso. So you're gonna be using an espresso. Espresso. So yep. Italian espresso means it means uh, to push through. To push through. <laughs> now listen, some of our good friends, and now I know elk season has opened up in the west, yep. and uh, there's all kinds of incredible hunting going on. A good buddy of ours, uh, Tim Glom and Nate, Nate yep. Zielinski, yep. I know that uh, the Botech community is watching Nate. If you check in with him over the next two yeah, weeks, they're going to be hunting yeah. clean through, man. Even, uh, even today, they posted a video on their Instagram today. They were out on public land, and last night a guy moved into their hunting area. Camping. Area. And yeah. wasn't aware of his win and completely washed out the area of elk. So now they got to completely readjust yep. and redo this. But that's the thing about public land is yep. it's everybody's land. You it's everybody's land. Everybody's so everybody's you got a guy pitching a tent, <laughs> busting, your, <laughs> busting your herd. Uh, but I know they'll be right back on. It's exciting to watch. Yep. One of the best things about this uh, forum and this media is it allows us to communicate with you in yep. real time. Yep. So that's exciting. So let's get started with a couple of these. Let's introduce them. Um, if you don't know grouse, this yeah. is rough grouse. Yep. So let's get up close and personal on this bird. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is talk about how we were able to take these out of the field and to bring them home. Mm -hmm. So uh, the simplest way to get them out is actually, it's, it kind of is one of those moments. The first time you do it, you really oh, yeah. wonder, is this happening? Yeah. Because the way to take them, now, you if you're going to pluck the grouse, we, you have to do it fresh. right away. Yeah, you got to do fresh. it fresh. If you, do, if you wait a while, the, it doesn't really like to pluck, but also it takes out the skin as well. You'll lose all the skin. So the whole point of plucking is to have that very delicate skin. Interestingly enough, we plucked rock doves, and there was no, no problem. problem. Yeah. You pluck these, the skin is very delicate, very light. So if you're going to pluck them, it's going to have to be gentle. It's going to have to be just a few feathers at a time. Yeah. Now, the way that we were successful is what... So I kept this breast on. This so this cool. this is evidence to you of how... And you know what? Show them, show them the, the hole, too. You got the hole. Okay, yeah. Shot them. 22. <laughs> so the 22 did a brilliant job. Um, and you can see there. So these were frozen. Um, you know, you can store these for about a year. I don't recommend more than a year. So we're coming up on the anniversary of this hunt. They store perfectly. They do. In the so freezer. literally what we did is we laid this bird down. So imagine laying it down on the ground just like this. Full and bird. The, full bird. bird like this. Full bird. So you can kind of imagine here. Here's the legs. And I kept this one so I could kind of demonstrate. So you take your boot and you press it gently here and here. And then you grab the legs and you gently, just gently pull up. And as you do, literally this is what this is what you're, left, what you're with. left with everything that was in everything from the head the neck the insides the intestine everything is pulled out in one clean swoop and it's yeah. all connected so you can just toss that away and you, what you're left with is your uh, breasts of your grouse so you can see this one has some really beautiful fat there and one of the things that i want to show you so we did leave this one whole yeah. so we could kind of tie it up and roast it look inside there look at the the, the ribs and everything it's yeah really it's cool. absolutely beautiful so i just 
just want to show you a quick technique. This is not going to be any different than working with a chicken. And one of the things I think you'll probably appreciate as we go through this is just how big the breast is from the grouse. And these are the tenderloins. Now the tenderloins are attached just underneath. And so they come off pretty easily. I'm going to show you a couple of really great techniques here. So the first thing you want to do, that's the breastbone. And all you want to do is just gently use a good sharp knife and just follow that down one side or the other. Yep. All that you're doing is I'm thinking about this and we have a, uh, a hunt coming up. It's a moose hunt and all I can think about is just cutting these breasts off is how good they're going to taste when we're up there if hopefully we get a moose. I'm hoping we do. But uh, you got a question there, Mom? No, I was just going to let you know that we have some um, new viewers, one from Marion, Virginia, and the other one from Iowa. They said hello from Virginia and Iowa. Hello from hello. Virginia and Iowa. Good, good to have you with us. We're thrilled that you're here. Now you can see what I've done. I just switched my knife. This is actually a fillet knife. I thought that would work, but it's just a little on the light side. Perfect for fish, but not for this. So I need a bit of firmer blade. So once you get down to that breastbone, you don't need to slice. What you can do is literally, you see the way that just pushes off there? Pushes, presses away, yeah. If you press it, then you literally, I mean, look at that. That breastbone, that's transparent. So you're literally wasting nothing. And what you're going to come into just up here is that's the wishbone. So you fight over that at uh, Thanksgiving. Yeah. <laughs> so so that's a... That, that's a small yeah. wishbone. That's for little wishes. Yeah. <laughs> at, at camp, you're all wishing for the same thing, though. That's right. That's, that's, it. that's absolutely right. It doesn't right. matter. You break it. Okay, Do you know what? Okay. Way we're getting the moose. <laughs> you know what? I'm actually. I'm going to keep this wishbone. We're taking that. We're going to use it up there. We'll use it for instead of rock, paper, scissors. We'll use the wishbone to determine who takes the first moose. So a little <laughs> base talking about a moose. Now listen, here in Ontario, we we normally it's very difficult to get moose tags. Very difficult. But well, what? I, I, People will wait 10 years, 10 years, 10 so, years to get a moose. But what Dakota did, and you should swap out with him so, he, yeah, so his arm doesn't fail. What Dakota did is he found us a region where there was extra tags. Now, he didn't tell us that it was almost all the way to Hudson's Bay. Uh, but uh, we're going to get a chance to make a good push towards uh, right. moose. Yeah, this place that we found, it's actually, the WMU is called 1D. And I mean, there's only water access and air access you cannot drive in our canoe ride alone up river is about 160 kilometers up river before we even get into this uh, management unit and then from there it's about 125,000 square kilometers of space that we have to hunt and it's all public land and uh, we got three bull tags so I mean it's gonna be pretty exciting we're also going up with two black bear tags yeah. And it's the land of the giants, folks. It's Northern gonna, Pike, yeah, yeah, land of the giants. It's going to be an episode you don't want to miss. That's I think one D is for one deep or one dementia <laughs> or one like honestly, I don't even want to. You know, I'm not even thinking. Let's focus on this. So, yep. first of all, I want to show you how clean that comes off using that technique. Just completely no waste at all. And this is the that tenderloin. Now I'll show you why I want to take that out. I want to take that out and just gently pull that off. So I'll set that aside. That's ready to go and be smoked. And what you'll see is there's a tenon that runs right up inside there. And all you have to do, I literally use my nail and I press that against the board. Now watch this. Gently press. Look at that. Completely out. Now that, that will not break down. That's that sinew. It's so simple, right? <laughs> well, it's great for, I'll tell you, it's great for making boots, but not great for yep. eating. <laughs> so what we'll do, yes, yeah, Cindy. Kansas, Ohio, Las Vegas. Oh, there we go. Right. We're, we're going to kick your butt, Las Vegas. Oh, yeah. Your, no. your new hockey team's going down. Oh, <laughs> let's not bring that up. Okay, but yeah. Wait till the Maple Leafs visit Vegas. Yeah. Okay. Unless they, they take all of our uh, Canadian hockey players like every other American team in the league. Okay. Well, let's not go there. Okay, so let's do it one more time. So all I did, there's the, again... There's that breastbone. I just follow it down one side and then just pressing gently. Now, you can be, obviously, when we're at camp, let's have a quick look. When we're at camp, we're not being as fussy. No. But let's face it, when you get this home, you brought it all the way Spent in. Spent a lot of time getting Spent it. Spent a lot of time, and we want to respect the product. And let's face it, when we get it out to the smoker, the better we take care of it here, yep. and the fewer cuts, the better condition it's going to be yep. out there. It's going to result in a much better end result, right? Like Absolutely. So again, 
And here's so here's that that bone. You can literally yeah, the see it, bone. the wishbone. Just literally pressing it off and underneath. Don't even need a knife. Honestly, this flesh, honestly, it's it's like butter. So tender. It's like butter. So just pressing that off. Now, you know, I understand, you know, we don't like fussing too much about talking about GMOs and, and you know, like not all things are evil here. Uh, but I'll tell you one thing. This bird, this bird lived a fine life yep. and then it was lights out for him in about uh, 30 seconds. If you watch the, uh, the video before we started, yep. you'll see that was me hunting one of these birds. Yep. We we're using the 22 yeah, LR. 22. Very accurate and with that vortex scope, I'm telling you, man, it was uh, easy, easy, easy. So uh, one more time so you can see there, that's what's left of that beautiful bird. Look at that, eh? Just literally, it's transparent, Dakota. Yep. And you, you can, can see right through that. And now it can just go to the dogs. Now it can go to the dogs. <laughs> yes, we have a question. Uh, so, Richard, great question. There's no reason to freeze them with the feathers on unless you're a chef and you want to demonstrate we it. We purely so. just did it for presentation's sake so yeah. that when it comes out here, I mean, you can't argue with us. It looks pretty cool. Yeah, <laughs> it looks very cool. Um, so, uh, you know, you're going to get these by the dozens. Yeah. Take the take the wings off, yeah, take yeah. the feathers off. Uh, yes, Cindy. Oklahoma and Idaho. Oklahoma and Idaho. Oklahoma and Idaho. <laughs> That's awesome. Let's do all. Let's see if we can get all 50 states tonight. <laughs> throw us some hearts and throw us some likes and let me hear where you're from. Uh, we love cooking yep. for you. And uh, so. Said it does look cool. It does yeah. look cool. That <laughs> a boy, Rich. Okay, so one more time. We're going to take that, uh, that little strip out. So let's find where that baby is. There it is right there. Now, if you're doing chicken or turkey, yep. this exists in all those. So um, the tenderloin is kind of the least used muscle. Yep. Um, that's why it has, you'll see there's absolutely no fat on it. Uh, it's very tender. And the reason it's tender is it has absolutely no use. I think it's just cushion. Yep. It's tasty yep. cushion. It's, cushion it's right tasty yep. cushion. So again, I literally, you, you, I just yeah, use my closer. nail. It's so cool. Nice and tight. Just use that. And then you can use the back of the knife or this. Make sure not to cut through it. If you want to make sure, just use the back of the knife. Press. And then that comes out. Just like that, we'll tuck and set that aside. So, this is the prep. Now, what I'm going to do, we're going to have a couple different applications. Mm -hmm. With the breast, the full breast, they're going to go out to the smoker. Now, we started the smoker about an hour in advance. Yeah, you want to get that charcoal going really far in advance so that when you go out there, we're going to do something called a quick smoke. So, typically, you would soak up your, uh, soak up your chips and let them soak, get them wet. And then you create a long smoke smoking between an hour and a half to two and a half hours. But we're going to do a quick smoke. So you see, we're going to go out there, dry chips. We're going to toss them right on the charcoal because these babies, what, maybe take 10 minutes to cook up? Maybe, especially because yeah. the thing is, because they're so thin, yeah. we want to get some great caramelization on the outside. In order to do that, we're going to need it to be super hot and then yeah. make sure we rest them. The one thing I want to do like we've been doing all summer long, is I want to give this a quick marinade. The reason I want to do a quick marinade here is I want to get any of that, what we would talk about, again, we always talk about yep. it, that gamey flavor. Yep. I want to get that out a little bit. Remember, the most important thing when we're hunting or angling is to get the people in our family and our friends enjoying this food. Exactly. The way we do it is yep. make it as palatable as possible. Yep. Yes, Cindy. California, she got a big smile. You know what? Every time we go to California, we take a run up that highway. We go to Big Sur. Well, Callie, we got some of your great wine right here. Oh, what a great segue. <laughs> Let's talk about that beautiful sunshine in California. Yes. Um, go ahead. Yeah, so we're going to start off. You'll see we're going to be doing some glazing in a little bit when we go to this rice. And so we're going to use a Pinot Grigio for that. And the reason we're going to do that is we're going to be doing a mushroom risotto. So we don't want that red wine to take over those flavors. Flavors. This is going to bring a really nice peachy flavor and finish with a really nice texture at the end. So this California wine, I mean, this is some of the best wine ever. Here in Ontario, we have a VQA uh, certification, but if I can't go Ontario, I definitely go California. Okay, so what I'm doing with this marinade, I'm just putting a couple pieces of rosemary in there. And then I'm going to take some lime. Now, because it's a super quick marinade, I'm not just going to take and put the slices in. 
I'm going to zest some yeah. in there. Yeah. So I've got a microplane, and literally, I'm going to do, I'm literally going to go right in with that beautiful zest. Now, there's nothing like citrus zest. You'll oh. see how often we use it. The oils in it are like, I would say, what, five times as strong as the juice? Oh, There's and just so zesting it, it smells so incredible. Yep. So I want to make sure we get all that. And Code, what I'll do is I'm going to get you to, so just a little trick, uh, just before you use the citrus for juice, I'm going to give it a quick roll there, slice it in half. Yep. You can squeeze those yep. in for okay. me. So that's going to be our liquid. Now that high acidity of the citrus is going to make sure is going to give us a little bit of uh, a quality that'll break it down a little bit. Got some garlic here too, and what we'll do is literally just trim off a, uh, go. a piece of this garlic. And the thing is, keep in mind that if you're going to do a quick marinade, you, you need to think about the fact that you've got to get the flavors going. Exactly. And this that, is, you don't you, have a lot of time. Yeah, I'll show you this, guys, real quick. i got to put doing one more thing in there. Yep, if you're doing something like this, a really easy way so you don't slop a bunch of stuff over your bag if you're going to bag something, is just to take it and roll this, that top inside out. That way, as you're dropping stuff in, if it splashes up on the edge, you're not getting it on that outside. So when you do flip it up, you can close it up and you're not covering that entire outside of the bag. Especially in the commercial kitchen, we always yeah. make sure to do that. It's, uh, it'll keep, it's, uh, it's hassle. It, it, yep. It's a critical control point. It makes sure that you're not going to transfer anything that you don't want in there. So I'm just putting some slices in there. Yep. Um, you know what we should, uh, you know, uh, hang there. Talk a bit about your wines. I'm going to see if I can find some ginger. Some ginger? Okay. Yeah, so we're going to be touching on some other red wines here. You'll see we have a Cabernet Sauvignon and a Merlot here. So very two very different wines. If you're if you're a white wine drinker and you're not quite into red wine, a Merlot is a great place to start because it's a very uh, very light wine. Very it's very fruity. palatable. Yep. You know what it is? The tannins. So yeah. a little bit about the tannins. So to make a red wine, the the wine juice macerates yep. with the skin, and it's it's based on how much uh, sugar there is. Yep. And how long and how bold those tannins are yep. that come from the skin. So you know with a Cabernet Sauvignon, we always yep. talk about big yep. Cabernet Sauvignons. That's, that, because, yeah. that's because that the tannins that come from the skin exactly. give you a huge punch. And yes, Cindy. New York City. New York City. Welcome, New York City. <laughs> Yes, yeah, it does. It does. It does. Beer Absolutely. works just fine. So what we want to do always with the Surefire Wednesdays in anything we teach, we're making sure to make this palatable. So we do, we do beer, we do whiskey, yep. we do bourbon. As a matter of fact, I challenge you to find an alcohol, whether wine, beer, <laughs> or spirit, that we're not going to use. Yep. So a quick peel here. I want to be able to uh, just take this. Now you can do this with a spoon or like I'm doing here, just with a knife. Just going to take that skin off the ginger, that ginger. Now, what am I going to get from this ginger? You know. Oh, you're going to get some of that nice, sweet heat. And it's really nice. It's kind of a mellow heat, but it really gives it a really nice flavor. Right? Yeah, so one of the things we've already got going here in this marinade, so we've got some beautiful fragrance from the uh, rosemary and from the garlic. But we didn't have a heat element. Yep. So immediately I'm like, okay, we got to get some heat in there. So let's put this in there. And you know what? Let's open up that uh, white wine. White wine, okay. We'll put we a little some... spot of it in. Cooking with all kinds of really simple. Is that really simple stuff already? Um, one of the things you're doing now, so we're talking about, you know, uh, you'll see one of the wines we have here is a twist top. Twist top that yeah. used to be the mark of an El Cheapo wine. Not anymore. Not really. anymore. No. So there's a lot of things, you know, there's a lot of really good wines that are using that. And exactly. so don't think that that's the mark of a really uh, cheap wine. Little trick when you're popping a cork, you're not actually, you know that sound that you hear when you pop it? It's yeah. actually not supposed to do that. Come in close here and I'll show you what it's supposed to sound like. When you get it to the top here, what you're supposed to hear is a kiss. So you hear, just a tss, and that's it. That's just it. Just a little bit. Uh, so just a little bit of that wine in. Don't need much. And then what I'll do now. Notice I'm not putting any salt in here. You might think the seasoning of salt would be a thing to add at this point. I want to avoid using salt because I don't want to start cooking this yet. 
And the great thing about using a, uh, a bag like this is that you can get all of the air out. There we go. And I know that all those flavors, they're going to start to combine. So I'm literally going to take that. If this, if I was going to be any more than about 20 minutes, yep. I would take and I would put this back in the refrigerator. Yeah. Remember, if it, it's got to be kept above that or below that 4 degrees, yep. which is... 40 degrees Fahrenheit. 40 degrees Fahrenheit uh, in order for it to be food safe. Yep. But because I'm going to be smoking this, I'm just literally going to take and set this over here. Yep. Get ready. The grill. You know what? I'm grabbing this. I just passed this for a second. Oh, okay. We got to do a little uh, shout out here, and it's one that is uh, really important to us. Is, yeah. So uh, he is a Bowtech ambassador and a, uh, huge, a huge mentor in our family because we've got quite a few ladies in our family who are joining the hunting crew this yep. uh, year, and she's quite a uh, quite an inspiration to them. Well, I know she's holding that uh, her bow there. Yeah, Ava Shockey, it, yeah. the, the signature bow. That's the that's the bow my wife has. Now, I was fortunate enough to be part of the uh, of the team that had a look at her book ahead of time. Yep. So that was a great honor. This book, you'll see by the you by the irregularities <laughs> here, that made it to my bedside table. So. Um, Eva is going to be live tomorrow at 12.30 uh, p.m. Eastern time, and she's going to be giving away one of her new books on, one of these. on Bowtech's Facebook page, so be sure not to miss it. If you don't want to miss it, be sure to text WATCH to 313131, 31 31, or if you're in Canada, WATCH to 393939, 39 39, so and you won't miss it. Yeah, it's a great time, a great opportunity to chat with Eva, maybe get some questions answered. I'm not exactly sure what they're doing as yeah. far as the live goes. But, you know, she's, uh, she's incredible. You've seen her, uh, the baby. Oh, uh, Lenny, uh, incredible mom, wife, mother, cook. Huntress. Huntress. <laughs> uh, so uh, don't miss that. That's going to be really worth watching. Okay, so let's talk about, uh, we got that marinating. Yep. Now, I think what we'll do is we'll get started on the risotto because that takes okay. a little bit of time. Sounds good. Um, and so what we're going to do, you'll see what I've got now. When you're doing risotto, uh, let's talk about pan selection. Yeah, good switch up. Uh, so pan selection, use a pan like this, for example, okay? So a little deeper, less width. But what you want is you want a pan that's similar to this. Something that's got some width. And I'll tell you why. When you're building a risotto, you're, you're going to want to add stock in and ladle it in as it's heating. So the first step for me is to get this on, and I want to get the stock going here. So it's important to have a hot stock. So you can use, if you want to keep it totally vegetarian, you can use a uh, just a straight uh, vegetable stock. But what I'm going to be do using here is I've got some nice chicken stock. Yeah. So I'm going to throw that on high. I want to bring that up to temperature. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of prep here. So, with that in mind, what can I do? Uh, well, I'll tell you what you can do. So, we've got some beautiful mushrooms here. Yep. Uh, what you can do is just stem these. I'm going I'm to need about six of those and okay. stem the others here as well. Okay, so we've got some nice shiitakes. And okay. Those are just gorgeous. Okay. Uh, and now, what I'm going to do, and I just, I'm going to need some elbow room here. Yeah. Did I catch you? No, you're oh, good. Oh, good. That was close. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to need some elbow room. So let's go over. Uh, See what cut. happens when you get in his way in his kitchen? He yeah, starts throwing clear. knives around. Uh, one of the things you want to do, start with a really nice, uh, fresh yellow onion. Just trim the top. Set that aside. And then trim the root. You want to get rid of that right away. Then you can see that's a root tip. I'm going to take and slice that perfectly in half. That reveals the beautiful petals of the inside of the yellow onion. And then I'm just going to take a few layers off. The fresher the onion, the fewer layers you need to remove. Yep. Sharper Peel. the knife, the less you cry. Yep, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so one of the reasons that you, if you have a really dull knife, what you're doing, imagine the cells inside the onion. What you're doing is you're cutting those with a blunt edge. And rather than slicing through them, you're, imagine like breaking, breaking a balloon. Yeah. So you're getting that and it creates like an aerosol that goes right up into your face. Yep. Not good. So the next thing is, uh, with now this is the root part, and this is the tip. I'm just going to take my knife, and I'm just going to draw. Look at that. Just draw back. See the motion? I'm pulling back towards myself. And what that allows me to do is to slice without going through the tip. Notice I'm keeping my fingers tucked back. 
and that's just for safety. It also allows me to control that. Now have a look at that. That beautiful uh, onion is nicely sliced. Fanned now, out. yeah, now fanned yeah. out. That's right. Now with my hands up like this, I'm going to make a pass and just slice through all the way back to that root tip, and then watch this. The nice thing about this, especially with risotto, so I'm going to tell uh, talk to you just a little bit about this grain of rice, and you'll notice that this onion is smaller than the grain of rice. Yep. So for risotto, it's really important to use a short grain or arborio rice. So this arborio rice has high starch content. Uh, you might think when making risotto, and if you've never had it, it's the most creamy and rich yep. and delicious. This makes, honestly, it makes beautiful savory dishes, yep. but it makes my family's and, favorite. And, uh, oh yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, but the, the best thing to do with this is risotto is my favorite to pair with anything like chicken or grouse. Anything that's kind of like that type of meat, this rice tastes amazing with. And doesn't actually take much longer. I know some people have a hard time with rice, but if you just watch this episode closely tonight, Take a few notes, write things down, you'll see just how easy it is to make an amazing... Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> he needs elbow room. So again, drawing through from the... This is the tip, this is a root. Making sure not to cut through that root. And then just a quick pass through. Don't cut yourself. And then again, <laughs> that fine dice. This is something that is simple to do. Now, with that done... What I want to start with is I want to start with the mushroom. So I get over here to the stove and I turn that on medium high. And I want to start with some butter. So it's important, especially when you're working with mushrooms, to work with a hot pan. There's so much liquid in them. We want to make sure to get as much of that out. And so let's just we'll press this up here. And I'm going to do this in a couple steps. Just because I want to have, you know, the mushrooms, if I cook them and leave them in when I'm doing the risotto, the problem is that they're really going to turn into kind of a mush. And what I want to do is I do want to saute them. I want the flavor. But at the same time, you know what I want? I want to see them bake. Yeah. I want to see clearly that cross section of the mushroom. It makes it taste so amazing. Well, mushrooms are so beautiful, too, for presentation. You know, you saw that, that bird, those breasts that we are marinating right now. And if you have guests over, your freezer's getting low, you pull these birds out, you want to impress your guests. And this is one way to make it absolutely beautiful. Now, Surefire recipes are all about using fewer ingredients. I think it's really important to make something simple, to use fewer ingredients. And you know what? You don't have to use expensive ingredients either. Oh, no. It can be inexpensive no. ingredients, and you can have all kinds of freedom uh, to do whatever you want. Some of the stuff, if not most of the stuff, is stuff you can either grow or find in your backyard. You, know, you can plant onions, all the different kinds of stuff that we use in these recipes. Well, especially when you're talking about like garlic and shallots, like yeah. you don't even need a big backyard in order to be successful with that. How many mushrooms do we want in this? I know Alicia, my daughter-in-law, is here with us tonight. She's moderating. She keeps giving me the eye when it comes to these mushrooms. I know how much she loves it. And, and of course, you can make this dish without mushrooms as well. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so we got lots of mushrooms going on there. Pan has now come up to temperature. Let's get a little bit of butter in there. Want to make sure to get some flavor from the butter. So we'll put about a tablespoon in. One of the one of the hallmarks of a really good risotto is good flavor development and timing. So you see now my stock has come up to temperature. I'm just going to turn that down a little bit. I just want it to be warm. And in goes as well. Olive oil. Olive oil. Beautiful, fragrant, late harvest olive oil. Nice and peppery. I just love it. Now, mushrooms in. And only the mushrooms. So you want to saute those, get some nice brown color on those, and those a little flavor. So one of the things that you're going to want to do here is you're really going to want to move around a lot. And the key is once you get, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn them over, get them kind of coated with the fat. Then I'm going to oh, smell that. And I'm going to leave them alone. Now, at this point, what I want to do is just a little bit of pepper. Tiniest little bit, okay, and salt. So I always use flaked sea salt. I love the texture and the flavor. And this is a good time to season. You want to make sure to season in layers. 
get everything done. I'm going to keep that temperature on. And one of the things I want to do is, this is, remember, if you've watched any of our broadcasts, you know this is the time not to rush it, right? Yep, don't rush Slow it. is smooth, smooth and smooth, smooth is fast. fast. So here in the kitchen, this is where the love comes. This is where you take your time to love yeah. those mushrooms. Every step you do here from the salt and pepper to the developing the brown flavors on there, that's all what develops each and everything you taste as soon as you serve this plate. So mushrooms, these are beautiful, smells great. I'm going to put those in. Now, I'm going to get some of the other ingredients here ready. Yep. Let's have a look at those so you can see, just so we can see how, how these are coming along. There's those marinated yeah, they breasts. Good. They look good. Make sure. They, and it's always good to turn it over a couple times, that quick marinade. And I think while I'm sautéing this, Bailey, you know what we'll do? Let's, let's hit up your smart food. Yeah, so good. Bailey's segment for smart food is really important because we know that there are different elements. First of all, we want to enjoy wild to table. We have to, right? You work so hard at getting that uh, game, whether it's birds or fish or whatever it is. But then you need something for training, yeah. something for the off season or to get ready and, for the season. And more importantly, you need something to wake you up on those early mornings before you're trying to get in there before these animals get moving. You got to make sure that you're asleep, or sorry, not asleep in the tree stand so that if that big buck walks by, you're not asleep for it. Exactly. Good point. Good so point. So this is a. Uh, this is a latte, so what we got is we got some coffee. I'm actually going to pull that coffee right out of the fridge here. While he's pulling some of those things, let's have a look at the coloring on these mushrooms. So you can see right away, and this is really important. What I'm literally doing is, so I'm just going to turn it over now once. You can see how they're beginning to shrink up in that beautiful color. But what I'm doing here is I'm creating flavor in the bottom of that pan. So when it comes time to put the risotto together, I have beautiful flavor already rolling. Okay, so what I got here is I actually took the time ahead of time to freeze coffee. Nice. So what that does is... That's espresso, right? That's espresso, yeah. So if you put a bunch of ice in your drink, it, it tends to water it down a bit, kind of like when you pour a ni nice pop and you leave ice in it, it kind of turns the water. I drink pop. I Personally, I don't drink coffee. These guys hate it because they go through about... Eight of these a morning while I'm sitting there. We're going to convert trying, you. They're trying to convert me, but I got those uh, those frozen coffee, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm actually going to toss all of this ice in because what I want this to become is kind of like a, uh, a slushy almost. And that's going to be perfect. Then I'm going to take this coffee. You can make as much coffee as you want. You know, it depends on how many people you're trying to serve here in the morning. You're going to pour that coffee in over top of the ice cube. Make sure to chill the coffee, otherwise what you're going to do is you're going to melt all of your ice cubes and then it's not going to be it's not going to turn out the way you want it that looks good already it looks good already and most importantly is uh your protein it's always uh i find personally it's a hard for me to find ways and time to add protein into my diet especially if you're trying to get fit for hunting season so this is a great way to add it into your morning coffee there's also this uh this stuff's full of bcas and stuff like that so it's great for muscle recovery and also helps wake you up there's a little bit of caffeine in there as well nice so we're gonna do, I'll do two scoops since we got a lot of ice and coffee. That in sounds here. good. I could actually use one of these. Uh, Bay, I'm just gonna <laughs> steal your uh, camera here for a second. Let's have a look at this for a moment. I wanna show you when you should be pulling these out. You see all that beautiful color, all that beautiful flavor. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take and I'm just gonna remove these mushrooms. They're gonna come back in later. But rather than using two different pans, I want to develop everything in one pan. Let's face it, it's going to taste better, the cleanup is easier, and uh, I don't want to miss a single bit of flavor as I'm developing this. So with that out, now I'm going to put a bit more olive oil in that pan, and then it's going to be time for my mushrooms to go in. So olive oil in, and I'll just turn that down just a little bit. We'll just keep it on medium heat. Smoke then, over here. What's that? I can smoke the grass over here. It's got smoke going. And then we'll put those uh, that beautiful uh, onion in. Oh man, it smells so good. It just you know what? Simple cooking, cooking from scratch. That's by far the best way. So now I'm just going to move this around, put that through the pan, and I want to develop a little bit of flavor here as well. And you'll see when I deglaze this pan exactly how much flavor I've developed. A little bit of seasoning. And we'll let that saute for a minute. 
Okay, like, Bailey, back to smart yeah, food. So I was gonna, I was gonna add some milk to this, but I only like to add milk as needed because I got a lot of coffee in there. So now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flick this on. And dairy is good, but honestly, sometimes dairy is dairy is, dairy, dairy is uh, very hard on the stomach. Actually, I find if I drink a lot of dairy, that it really kind of upsets your stomach, and it's just not really good, especially early in the morning especially if you're going to be active or anything like that. Yeah. You don't want to throw anything that's gonna upset your stomach. I want you to get real close on this coat so that they can see as this blends together. It's gonna look amazing. Ready? <laughs> Not possible. You can see where I get my nickname Sasquatch. It's gonna break everything. Okay, Coach, while he's uh, finishing that up, I want to show you. So, this is where at this point these are beginning to saute. And what I want to do is I want to saute those till they're just translucent. So, I want to add some color. But this is the time. If I am to jump ahead now and to put the rice in, what happens is I get ahead of that process, that get ahead of that flavor development process by trying to add something or trying to rush it. If you want to make exceptional food, the key is pacing yourself, taking some time. This risotto should take you about 20 minutes from start to finish, and the key is just give it a little bit of that time. Okay, so that's coming along nicely. Let's have one more look at the, how you make it out there. Oh, it's good. good. We're, ready, we're ready to go. Is it completely done though? Oh yeah. Yeah. Slush. Oh, get that's slushed out. Okay. It's kind of like a nice cap. No, it's yeah. No, that's that's. Oh man, look at that. Oh gosh, that's beautiful. There you go. Oh man, that's awesome. Give that a try. I think. Mmm. It's like adult slushy. <laughs> it is adult slushy. I won't drink. I don't drink coffee, but you can enjoy it all you That's want. That's delicious. So we have espresso. So you've got the caffeine. That's going to give you okay. Yep, definitely. And then that flavor. What's the flavor? That's chocolate it's caramel. Chocolate caramel. Yeah, that just adds a little bit of sweetness to it, and mm. it just really wakes you up. That's delicious. That is a good smart food recipe. I might try it. <laughs> try it. So I can't do it. You can't do it. Okay. Nope. <laughs> So let's go in with some of the rice. Now, I'm going to go with about a cup. When you're talking about arboreal rice, when you compare that to long grain rice, so jasmine rice or any other long rices, you're going to need a liquid that's about three to one. So I'm going to start with a couple cups here. And there's no rush to get liquid in. And I'll tell you why. It's an important step. Be able to and that smell fantastic. Those mushrooms are incredible. And I'm gonna add just a little bit more oil. So the olive oil is a really important part of this. It gives it great flavor, it yep. makes it luxurious. And let's face it, olive oil is really good for you. This is not high heat cooking, so we're not gonna kill all of its nutritional value. Yep. So you see what I'm doing right now? I'm coating all of those grains. It gives it that beautiful gloss too. Oh, the sheen is beautiful. And all of that gorgeous rice now is mixed together with that, uh, with all of the uh, onion. Now, so we turn that up, and this is one of the really important things. So we've got that Pinot Grigio that Dakota's got. Yep. Now that those are all coated, we just turn them over and have a quick look here. Notice that the bottom of the pan is kind of nice and dry. Notice the color of the rice. We're starting to pick up some of that brown flavor that was developed with the use of the uh, mushrooms. Now I'm going to go in, I'm going to go in with that Pinot Grigio and look at this. So what you can imagine is, oh man, the smell. Oh, you, I wish flavor, you could man. smell that. That peachy flavor, oh, oh my God, it smells it, incredible. Eh? So what's happening right now is, first of all, our rice is getting drunk. Yep. Our rice is drinking up all of that incredible California sunshine. Oh, look at that color too coming up. And do you see that color? That's exactly it. So that's from the mushrooms. Yep. That's from the uh, onions. from the onions. And I'm literally going to continue to do this until it's almost dry. Now there's not going to be any alcohol value, no alcohol content. Yep. But you know what? We will have we have all of that incredible flavor development that comes from the grapes. Now look at that immediately. This is the difference. Do you see how that's creamy? You see that creaminess there? 
That's what you get when you have risotto. So, this is one of the most important things. Instead of a straight up measurement, with risotto, yep. you literally ladle in a ladle at a time. So literally like this, and you're just going to literally give it a little stir. That's chicken stock right there. Right? Chicken stock. Chicken stock, yeah. Now, imagine if I used a cold chicken stock, what would happen? It would cool that pan down immediately. Exactly. So that's going to prevent the cooking. And literally, I'm just going to ladle a few of these in. But the key is, you're going to want to cook this until it's just... Uh, has a little bit of bite, you know, the Italians call it al dente, but it's just that little bit of tooth on the tooth. You don't want this to be soft and mushy. This will turn into a puree on you. I'm going to turn down the heat. We can just go over low heat. I don't want to cover this up because I want this to, uh, some of the uh, water to escape, and I'm concentrating the flavors here. Beautiful. Okay, so I can't really walk away from this. You see how beautiful that is. Yep. I think, yeah, you know, now's a good time to talk about the wines a little bit. I'm going to work on this risotto Sounds while you're good. doing that. So that Pinot Grigio that we just tossed in there, that's a really nice white wine. It's very, you know, it has a few tannins in it. When we talk about tannins... No tannins on the white. No. No tannins that, on the white, but, but that, that, it's that you same, were thinking mineral. That, yeah, yeah. that, that nice mineral that, You know flow. that tangy kind of dry feeling you get from a red? That's that same thing. The tannins in the red are what cause that in the white. This Pinot Grigio is just going to have that finish of that very dry flavor. And so this here, we've got a few examples here. This is a white wine. There's not much reason for a white wine to breathe, so it can go into a taller, skinnier glass. And this is stemless as opposed to stemmed glass. Look at that. Beautiful color. And on the nose, the one thing you'll notice on whites is on the nose, it's just, it's very, you mentioned peach. It's very mineral, but what you'll find is that its flavor yeah. doesn't always match the nose. That's really good. That's so, not even completely chilled. And it's not chilled. So temperature is important yep. with the white wine as well. But what you will always want to do when you're evaluating the wine is first of all, oh, so what does it smell like? Yep. And then what does it taste like? And that will be a clear indicator for you yep. what kind of food it will go with. Exactly. That's a beautiful uh, choice at Pinot Grigio. And then we're going to touch on this Merlot here. So I'll pour a glass of this Merlot and I'll show you the difference just in color between the Cabernet Sauvignon and the Merlot here. So we're just going to pour a glass here. And the reason that red wine glasses have... show you an, an example of a decanter. So if you have a big group of people coming over, you're going to want to decant your wine. So pour a whole aerate and come to life. All those flavors will actually start to mellow a little bit out of the bottle. Yeah, yep. you do. And you know, one of the things, so this Merlot that you, is that compared to a Cabernet Sauvignon, it has almost a ruby red color, exactly, yeah. and it's it's very transparent. You can actually see through this, especially held up to light. You can really see through that. Now, when Dakota pours that Cabernet yeah. Sauvignon, that's going to be almost black. Exactly. You're not going to be able to see through. It's a simple technique. This little rib that's actually on the top of a bottle here. This that's where you want to run that knife right across that, and then twist that off and it creates a really nice presentation on the bottle. You're not taking that entire foil off. Just toss this out here. And you want to take your corkscrew and you want to place it like this. I'm just going to, one quick uh, side note on the risotto. Yep. I'm going to make sure to season it. Um, now my stock, the chicken stock or vegetable stocks, it's important to have no salt added. If you think about something that's perfectly seasoned, like a, a stock yep. that's got salt in it, and then you concentrate it by reduction, what's going to happen? Yep. It's going to be gonna super, be super salty. salty so I you have to be very careful. Exactly. So I'm adding the seasoning. Now, with uh, grains, it's important to season right at the beginning or at least in the middle. Otherwise, it's not going to take the seasoning in, yep. and you won't get that really nice, beautiful flavor. So see, once again, no pop, just a little kiss, taking that off. And you can already see the color on that cork, how dark that Cabernet Sauvignon is. So we're going to pour this into a stemmed glass. This is a Bordeaux red wine glass. And already look at the dark, almost black color 
of that Cabernet Sauvignon. And so the difference between this is a crystal glass as opposed to a uh, as opposed to glass. And the difference is is that crystal is actually corrugated. You know, you've seen corrugated cardboard. Crystal is corrugated. So what happens is you'll see people they they swirl the glass, and what it's doing is actually aerating that wine as it runs over that corrugation in the crystal. It's aerating it. Think about it like water in a babbling brook. Yep. Going over those rocks, it's creating an aerosol. It's creating exactly. a thing. So it, part of uh, enjoying the wine, mm -hmm. especially when you're pairing it, is to be able to enjoy its fragrance and enjoy its taste. And so one of the things about decanting is when you get into aged wines, decanting is really important. Mm -hmm. Most of these fresh California wines, exactly. they don't need much. Put them in a glass, yep. give them a swirl, and they're ready to go. And so what happens is you smell this Cabernet Sauvignon right off the bat, and you get a really strong oak flavor out of that, eh? Oh, yeah. There's no the question. The smell out of that is pure oak. So the difference is, of course, with the white. The white is aged in stainless. It's literally, and that's where that mineral, that kind of real fresh brightness yep. comes from. But it's that oak, that French oak in yep. most cases, that gives it the bold. You get like all kinds of vanilla, and you get all kinds of really powerful. Yeah, the finish on it is vanilla for sure. And then those strong tannins, which gives you that dry feeling in your mouth. Mm. Mm, that's a nice wine. And so all of these wines here are California wines. California is a great place to buy wine out of. You can buy wine, but why not support local uh, wineries if you can out of the U.S. or here in Canada, we try and support Canadian. Or even if you want to go to your provincial area, Ontario wines for us. How's that coming along? Good. So this is almost finished. We're just got, we've got a little bit of reduction time here. Um, you can see that beautiful creaminess reduced or uh, developing. I think what we want to do is we want to head out. You want to check on that barbecue? I want, to, I want to do that. Now, one of the great things about using cast iron, I can actually turn this off. Yep. I'm going to add the mushrooms back in. Look at these beauties. Oh, my gosh. This is my favorite part of cooking is the finish. Literally, I'm just going to... That looks Gosh. amazing. Doesn't that look good? That looks good, man. Oh, man. Okay, so now I'm just going to leave that, and the residual heat is going to allow it to continue to cook. Now, let's go out and take these birds. I'm just going to pull these out. And literally, let's have a look at exactly what this looks like, Bay. So, a little bit of that liquid. Beautiful. You can see. Oh, man, it smells so good already. And I'm going to take these and we'll go out let's have a uh, i'm gonna grab i think i'm gonna grab a little bit of red wine and let's head out to the barbecue <laughs> so uh as we said earlier one of the most important things is to start it ahead of time there's ozzy how you doing Oz? oh man and there's seiko how's it going boy yeah we got gross hey, 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 hey. <laughs> So uh, now, one of the things we want to do here, uh, Dakota touched on it uh, before we started, is we want to make sure to just have a real quick smoke. So what he's doing, have a look at that fire in there. So this is, uh, let's have a quick look at this. This is a yeah. beautiful uh, coyote outdoor. So this coyote asado uh, smoker allows us to use both a lump charcoal and you know, like we've been, we've been hard one in it, charcoal, yeah. but this is a true chef's tool. This is something that will do great work. Um, it'll make short work actually, because the way it uh, holds the heat, yep. um, the way that it allows to control the oh, temperature. Just check this out. Look at this. Look at this fire stone here. That just holds so much heat alone. So we're going to take dry chips and that's going to go directly on. That's going to immediately start to smoke. Oh, and the smell, that's apple wood, so we're apple wood smoking this, bro. We got a little flame going on We got yeah. flame going. A hot fire. Oh, yeah, she's going hot. Take a look at these. Look at those bad boys. Got that white wine in there. 
So we're literally, now one of the important things that we've got here with the Coyote is that deflector. Yeah. So I've got open flame underneath, but that deflector stone, which is made essentially out of a pizza stone, that's going to allow me to be able to cook in no time. Let's close that up. Yep. And you want to know what? I'm going to grab a little bit of oil. We're going to season that grill. Sounds but good. you can talk a little bit about our giveaway starting on September. Actually, if you want to grab it. Yeah, yeah. So what we've got, so I just need some paper towel and a little bit of oil. Uh, the Asado uh, uh, cooker is something that uh, we're going to be giving away. So we, we've got a sweepstakes starting on September 7th. We're going to ship one of these bad boys to you wherever the winner is. Now we've got this, and we've also got a beautiful Coyote 32-inch barbecue. Now these are premium cooking tools. These are the kind of cooking tools. Let's have a talk here with Seiko. Seiko wants in on this. How's it going, buddy? <laughs> he loves this barbecue. And so... The Asado cooker and the 32-inch propane are professional cooking tools, tools that will allow you to get incredible results. So what we're going to do here, look at the oh smoke. Man, we got smell smoke that apple wood. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to have a nice, quick smoke. Boom. And so literally just a little bit of oil here. And I just want to season this. Now, these are going to be delicate. So I want to make sure every time, even though these are stainless, these are beautiful grills that last a lifetime. But what I want to make sure I do is just get a nice coating on there every time. A nice layer. There we go. And then I'm going to lay these on. We're just going to need a little bit of uh, salt and pepper there, buddy. So I'm going to go presentation side down. Get, make sure we get a couple of seeds on there. Slices on there, yeah. yeah. That lemon zest too. As soon as that hits the grills, all of those oils are going to come out and it's going to taste amazing. Get some salt on there. Salt. Oh yeah, look at that. Good. He's going to put these on. Now. A little bit of fresh ground black pepper. If you can, fresh ground black pepper is so much better than just... Uh, ground pepper you activate the oils in that black pepper when you grind them so now what we're going to do we're going to get that closed up and we're going to set i'm going to turn this uh we'll just actually open that up a little bit that's gonna i think we want to yeah we want to otherwise we'll have a cloud of smoke in there okay so now we're let's go back inside let's do a quick check inside on our hey, buddy. risotto you doing here, Kylie? Make sure Ozzy doesn't follow you in. <laughs> okay. So that creaminess, I'm just going to turn it on a little bit. Just need to develop that a little bit. Code, you want to see if we've got some Parmesan? Yeah. Let's we'll, add Parmesan to this. I think that'll be a beautiful finish. Get that going, finish reducing that. So you can see what I was saying about pulling those mushrooms out just for the cooking process what that means is that we'll have this absolutely the beautiful mushrooms but then the it'll be just carried on top of this gorgeous uh, risotto how are we doing there we got some yep awesome important, important to always have uh, parmesan on a little hand. bit of parmesan on hand the other thing you did with waiting to add those mushrooms is you took the time to saute those in the pan and when we uh, put that white wine in the pan you took that extra time to get that next level flavor from the brown and from the mushroom. So this is, I think this is going to be an exceptional pairing. That Parmesan, oh, yeah. that firm Parmesan, makes it creamy and rich. So just a, a quick recap, just to go over what we did. Um, Bailey, you're smart food tonight. What we did is we did a uh, chocolate caramel. You gonna taste? Yep. And there you go. Yep. So tonight, what we did is we did a chocolate caramel protein ice Ooh, latte. So good, what we man. did is we took some ice cubes and then we took some chilled coffee that we made earlier and we put it into a blender with a scoop of protein from Mountain Ox and then we blended that up. And what we ended up with? You know what? Uh, fire it up again. One more time. Make the consistency really nice. And then let's get another clean pour on that. I want to see that. Yeah, definitely. Perfect. You can 
smell the coffee as soon as you start to blend it up again. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh man, that looks. Look so at that! Good. You got that slush as it goes I in. I haven't tried it yet. You haven't tried it yet? No, oh, it's delicious. It try that. You need to straw at some point. Oh man, that's good. That'll get me drinking protein. Yeah, yeah. Boy, that's yeah, exactly. good. But what that does is you got those early mornings in the stand. You got mm. that caffeine from the coffee to wake you up. Definitely. You got that protein and BCAs yep. too. When you're out on those hunts, you're hiking and stuff. You don't want to be sore the next morning. Well, especially in the morning, right? You get a little yeah. lazy in the yeah. morning if you're heading out to the stand or something and you don't eat a full meal. But then you know you're sitting in the stand. You're like, <laughs> and you're so hungry. Yeah, and you know, you know what else? Just a just a side note. I notice I'll go on a hunt and I'll come back ten pounds lighter. You don't want you don't want to miss those <laughs> opportunities to build that muscle when you're out there because you train for it. But you're also I think this there. needs some more parmesan. Okay. You can never have too much parmesan. I can go to the barbecue and check on our uh, on our gross. Make sure the dogs haven't gotten into the yeah. gross. You can see as that's starting to dry up now, it's still a little too moist. What you want to do is pull this away and not have any kind of, so you see, I'll watch, I make it like a little canal, I part the sea here, and see how it comes back together, all that liquid? So you want that, when you part it, to stay. You stay want there. that part to stay there, and the sea to stay parted before you, it's ready to serve. But we're getting really close here, that cast is holding the heat. It's just on low right now, we're not going to add any no. more liquid. If you guys could smell what this risotto smells like, imagine when you take a nice big whiff out of a white wine. You got that smell with those yep. roasted marshmallows. Oh, yeah. Not, I said marshmallows. Marshmallows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, marshmallows. Roasted in the onions. And what did you do while I was gone? <laughs> he didn't put marshmallows he, in there. He put marshmallows he in there. It wasn't thick enough, okay? It needed to be thicker. Just a, a couple more uh, reminders if you joined us late. A uh, reminder that 12.30 p.m. Uh, tomorrow, Thursday, uh, Eva will be live on the Botec uh, Facebook page. She'll be giving away her book, Taking Aim. And don't forget to watch uh, Nate Zelensky uh, over the next couple weeks oh, as yeah. he hunts for elk in Colorado. Yep. Um, the stories, they've got two characters. They've got uh, Lopsided Larry, Lopsided I think. Lopsided Larry and, and Ricky Bobby. Ricky Bobby, the original names, yeah. guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, you know, it's funny, eh? We name all of ours. Oh, yeah, we name all of ours for sure. We, we, we've got John Wick. We've got John Wick, Riverman. <laughs> Riverman. I mean, <laughs> but the one, but the, the most exciting thing, we'll touch on it again. We're going to try, we're going on a northern moose hunt here in Canada in about two and a half weeks, guys. And we're going to try and go live up there. Most likely we won't have service considering we're up in the middle of nowhere where there's no roads for about 200 miles and we're canoeing in 200 kilometers, but we're going to try and if we can, hopefully you'll see a live moose hunt. If not, when we get back, we're definitely going to have some footage for you to see that live moose hunt. We have a chance at bear, at wolf, fox, rabbit, grouse, you name it. It's endless. The amount... It's just, there's literally every animal you could imagine up in northern Ontario, Canada. Okay, so this is the last step, and this is, I think you're really going to love this. Let's fire this baby up. Now, I'm going to turn this on high because I want to get to, I want to get to action. How long have we been? Man, we've been rolling an hour now. If you've been with us the whole time, <laughs> thank you for watching. We're having a great time. The grouse are looking great. I'm going in with a little bit of butter. We had a question there. Why the uh, kiss on the wine as opposed to the pop? Just yeah. purely for... No, it's just for serving. Just, just for service. There's no practical. It's just not... You know, if you're at a restaurant, you, you don't want... Unless you're doing champagne, you don't want a bunch of pop. Going <laughs> Even on. then, you don't want you don't want yeah, a pop. Yeah, it's just more elegant, yeah. right? So nope. that that's why. No, no uh, technical reason. Just that's how you serve in a restaurant. Yeah. So what I've got here is you'll all just love the fact. And imagine for yourself, you've got this beautiful oh. grouse. And then what we've got, we just slice these open. So you've got. You've got figs. So figs oh, are sweet. These are California figs, too. They right? are. They're slightly <laughs> sweet and savory. So what I'm going to do is we've got a little bit of heat. We've got this beautiful uh, risotto. And what we're going to do is we're going to sweeten the whole deal up by adding just a little bit. I'm going to use a little bit of this. Just give me a crack at yep. a little bit of that. Just a spot of it. You don't, yep. Awesome. So, again, hot pan. What I'm going to do with the figs, I'm going to leave those stems on. Oh. I'm going to tuck those in just like this, just like this, a little bit of butter, just like that. Oh my gosh. I would have never have thought about adding figs to this, but that's going to be a really yeah, nice delicious. combination. Well, and what I'm going to do, and the key is to just get them heated up. This is 
a little bit of clover honey. So we're going to give a little bit of a drizzle there, okay? And we're just going to bring those to life. Now, one of the things that's going to happen immediately by sauteing the figs is we're going to bring up some really great sweetness. It's going to be like if you've had creme brulee yep. or creme caramel. It's going to be almost, it's like going to be a caramel, almost yep. like that slightly burnt kind well, of... They have so much sugar in them. The oh, sugar, there's a ton of sugar. start to heat them up, the sugar in the fig just starts to seep out and it starts to caramelize on the bottom. I'm sure not yet, but you'll see on the bottom, the actual natural sugars of the fig start to caramelize. Okay, I think it's time for us to get out of the Okay, should we come take a look? Yep, let's go and have a look. It's going to bring the tongs in, or leave them out there? Okay, yeah, just leave that now. That'll be, that'll be just perfect. That'll be perfect. Yep. Let's go grab our, uh, our grubs. As you guys can see here, this is our outdoor chef headquarters here. This is where we get all our work done. Before we head out for the hunts, during and bringing you guys these Surefire Wednesdays every single Wednesday on 7 p.m. This is where it all starts. Hey, buddy. How you okay. doing? So, I can see we've got citrus. Oh, yeah. We've got some nice coloration. Now, the reason we also chose to use smoke in this case is because we can't do throw a ton of heat on these for a long period of time. So, let's take these back inside. Those look just beautiful. They smell beautiful. There's a citrus and rosemary, and uh, they're perfectly done. You can tell just by touching them, they look amazing. And so this is how we're going to bring this all together. First of all, these are super, super tender. And I'm literally going to take, and I'm just going to slice these just on a little bit of an angle, just like this. You know, I've been trying to decide, you know, Dakota, whether to, and Bailey, whether to put this on top. Look at that beautiful texture and that beautiful color. Well, my mouth is just watering. Honestly, <laughs> that just looks gorgeous. So I'll just take, and again, that just a little bit of a slice there. That flesh is so thin and so delicate, but you can see how beautifully white that texture is. Really important not to overcook it at this point. It's coming along nice. Yeah, we got, we're good here too. It looks oh, like. yeah. So oh, I showed yeah. them here. I was showing them parting the seed here. So I just want to. Well, yeah. And then actually, you know what? That needs a little bit of. I'll just. Uh, I'm really going to fire just a bit more wine in there. Give that a nice little stir. So we're getting nice caramelization here. So you guys can see now as I go like that and part that rice, it stays together and doesn't come back in. Just slowly starts to creep. That's your perfect consistency right there. Oh, it smells so good in here. Oh man, <laughs> as soon as you add that wine, the heat just activates it. So what we're doing, every time we do a surefire, so often it seems like we don't get a chance to finish it. So we're trying to select recipes <laughs> we can finish in real time. And if you guys have any suggestions, anything you want to see, let us know. We want to do recipes that you guys are having maybe a little bit of trouble with or would really like to see. So let us know what you want to see and we'll do it for you. This gross was actually a recipe request from yeah. I think our third few weeks surprise? ago. Yeah. 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 What? And then uh, we're just getting to it got to the bottom of our freezer. Mm. Look at that, eh? So I think what we'll do with this now is let's hit that with Parmesan on top. Okay. There you go. And then we'll see how these beautiful figs finish. You see this little tool that we're using, guys? It's called a microplane. It's a very, very, very fine zester. And it works really nice for things like lemons, oranges, Parmesan. Oh, yeah, look at those figs. So you can see the figs are, are nicely caramelized. I think we'll just literally... Honestly, I think they're going to be so good. So this little bit of sweetness is going to be a beautiful fit for the uh, grouse. Um, this is a great way. You know, wild to table is yep. a very special oh, thing. Man. It's a special thing because, you know, we, we were able to, first of all, locate these birds. We were able to hunt these birds. You know what I love with wild to table? 
What I love to, with Wild to Table is that every single time you go to, so this is a grouse that we killed about uh, a year ago. Almost a year ago. Almost yep. a year ago. And so every time we go into the freezer and we pull out something that we took from the wild, yep. the stories come rushing back, the memories, the memories come right. rushing back. So every single time, whoever you're on the hunt with, those memories come back. And that's what, you know, if you get your meat from the grocery store, all you remember is walking down the meat aisle, grabbing it out of the cooler and putting it in your cart, right? Yeah. And I thought, you know, to be honest, I thought the whole, uh, I've heard, you know, before, now keep in mind we're new hunters, so we're, you know, yeah. a couple years now. So I always heard hunters talking about getting their meat. I was like, how much can you possibly take? <laughs> and then I'm like, okay, hold on. Moose, you well, know, 600, 700, 700 pounds. pounds of meat. Uh, between the six yep. of us, the three guys and three gals, you yep. know, we're going to have that six About white tail. Six, six, 700 pounds of white tail meat from all of our family. And, and, and uh, for Canada goose and duck, based oh, yeah. on my shot getting better, <laughs> we're going to have a lot more also in the yep. freezer. Yep. So, you know, it's, it's, a re it's a choice. It's a great lifestyle. It is. And as a professional chef, I can assure you that if you're just new to hunting or if you're just getting into it, or even if you, if you have a hunter in your family, but you just uh, have never really enjoyed uh, the, the, and actually we've got to try this too, right? Oh, yeah. So it looks beautiful, very rustic dish. Um, you got, you got this it. is, just hold on, this is, this is really your opportunity to take and to find ways to enjoy it. And, and it looks almost pink, like not like pink, like undone, but like kind of like the you know flesh is like pink. You know why though? The smoke, right? The smoke, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that smoky flavor got in there, and that's, yeah, yeah. that's crazy, eh? the quick smoke literally got in that quick. Eh? You guys got all chefy tonight with the figs and stuff, it looks like when you go to a <laughs> restaurant you're like, I kind of know what's oh, on the plate. Dude. Real. First time I'm having gross. Hold on, I'm going to try it with, I'm going to try, so here, let's do a little bit of this wine pairing in live fashion. Oh my gosh, I got to have one of the figs too. That tastes just like chicken. Yeah, oh, yeah. Like so yeah, I, I call it the chicken in the woods. So <laughs> now let's just do this. We have a few more minutes. Let's just Thanks. talk about yeah. that. So let's talk about let's talk about pairing this. So mm -hmm. you got the uh, risotto. No question. Yep. And the but yep. now I just slightly more gained. Well, it's just stronger in general because actually I was really surprised. When we harvested these grouse, the meat color was, uh, it was like, um, it was red, eh? It was like maroon. Just about, yeah, yeah. It was very dark, and actually, as it sat in the freezer, and almost a year later, it's actually surprised we paired it. But it would actually be paired very well. Yeah. You know yes. what? Yes, Cindy. Smell it's about the three of us, we got a brain, so we're working on smell of vision trying to get it. If it does come out, guys, just know it was us. Yep. So, uh, <laughs> you know, my, uh, I'll tell you what I, what I really feel on this is that the Merlot, yep. the Merlot yep. overpowers yep. this. Yep. It tastes great. So the cab would definitely. The cab would not be a selection. So, um, one of the things about Surefire Wednesdays we've committed to is to doing wild to to test them in real time, right yep. here in front of you. That's what makes it exciting. Yep. So, our, our, my anyway, my evaluation of this, <laughs> I don't know what that is, I think it's a feather. Is it a feather? Yeah, it's okay. I just wouldn't eat it. I thought it was a pellet. No, it's a pellet, look. Well, it can be a pellet. I shot it with a 22. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway. <laughs> what? Refocus. <laughs> um, so, Wild what game, I, I'm being cautious. Yes, yeah, right. What I would say is that the risotto, the figs with this, too. Yeah, the figs, this, the figs, this, this combination of flavors together. So Even a Chardonnay would go really nice with this. Eh? A Chardonnay. A little yeah. bit more bold. Yep. So I'm literally, let's just take, I, I'm going to show them what a bite looks like. Yep. So this. <laughs> Best bite. This is the bite. And what the, I got it? Good. So that's the bite, and I uh, just want to do a quick uh, one more uh, bite here. 
a lot, a lot more one more bites coming out here. Let me tell you, figs and grouse and risotto <laughs> are a good thing. Perfect mix. It's a very good thing, and just I don't know. definitely white. Yeah, definitely, definitely white. white. Who cares? We're gonna drink it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we've had your attention. Absolute pleasure. Listen, we've been going live to a lot of channels tonight. We want to say hi to every single yeah. one of you, to our fearless fans, the outdoor chef fans, those watching from Coyote Outdoors, from Bowtech, yep. Diamond, Excalibur, Bowtech Women. Every single one of you are incredibly important to us, incredibly important to the outdoor chef and to what we're doing, bringing wild to table to you every single week. So uh, with that being said, for Bailey yep. and for Dakota, who's gone out to check on the barbecue, <laughs> and for myself, our entire family, we want to thank you for watching. Thank you to all of our really important partners. Without them, this would not be possible. And, uh, and here's to all of you who are in the field tonight, who are enjoying the hunt and the pursuit. Yep. There's nothing like it. And if you've never done it before, let me tell you, from a hunter who's brand new to all of this, yep. uh, just a couple years, let me tell you, if you want to tap into something that is so special. If you want to tap in to the outdoors in a way that you never expected, take the time to go down to your local archery shop, find yourself a bow, see what it feels like to put something precision in your hands, to, to put a grouping yep. an inch apart, 40 and 60 yards downrange, see what that feels like and it, how it changes you it changes at a cellular level. It changes who you are. For Yama? Yeah, Dustin said, I would do the dishes in exchange to eat one of your dishes. Yes, that rhymes. <laughs> thank you, Dustin. Uh, thank you, and to all of you out there, keep hunting uh, and uh, enjoy your week. We'll see you next week, 7 p.m. on Wednesday night uh, for Surefire Wednesdays. Thanks for watching. Now we're going to finish all these gross up. Yes. <laughs> what the thing? Enter it into a meat crisis here. Hey everyone, we know you're hungry for success this archery season. So while you're prepping for the hunt, we're inviting you to join us live every Wednesday as we share our best recipes to show you how to prepare your game from wild to table. It's all part of the Bowtech Live content series to help you become a smarter hunter. Surefire Wednesdays are broadcast at camp, in the kitchen, and from the backyard. Simply text WATCH to 313131 and we'll send a link instantly to your phone when we go live. Bring your questions, get ready to win some great gear, and we'll see you live on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern.